Born in 1830, Robert Cecil Salisbury was one of Britain's most important politicians of the 19th century. He served as Prime Minister three times for a total of over 13 years, during which he acted as his own foreign minister. Robert Cecil Salisbury belonged to one of Britain's oldest noble families. He descended from Lord Burghley and the first Earl of Salisbury, who were chief ministers of Elizabeth I, who reigned all the way back in the late 16th century. Inspired by his family's rich political tradition, Robert Cecil was sure to start his political career early in his twenties, joining the Tories of the Conservative Party. Despite his nobility, he couldn't enter the House of Lords immediately, since his father was still alive and serving there. Undeterred, Robert, in 1854, joined the House of Commons, winning his seat through connections in an undisputed county. He served as Secretary of State for India in the Conservative government of 1866. When his father died in 1868, he inherited the nobility title, then shifted to the House of Lords. Later, he was appointed Foreign Secretary in Benjamin Disraeli's government and played a leading part in the Congress of Berlin. After Disraeli's death in 1881, Salisbury emerged as Conservative leader in the House of Lords. He embarked on his first premiership in June 1885. He held the office until January 1886, when William Ewart Gladstone, the preeminent leader of the Liberal Party, came back to power during the surprise announcement that he was in favour of Home Rule for Ireland. However Salisbury formed an alliance with the breakaway members from the Liberal Party, who were called the Liberal Unionists. With their help, Salisbury won the subsequent general election in July, 1886. He remained as Prime Minister until Gladstone's Liberals formed a government with the support of the Irish Nationalists at the 1892 general election. However, the Liberals lost the 1895 general election and Salisbury for the third and last time became Prime Minister. He even led the Conservatives to another electoral victory in 1900. However, Salisbury relinquished the premiership to his nephew Arthur Balfour in 1902. Internationally, Salisbury avoided alignments or alliances, maintaining the policy of the British splendid isolation. One of his great achievements was obtaining the lion's share of new territory in Africa during the imperialistic scramble for Africa, all while avoiding a war or serious confrontation with the other major European powers. He also led Britain to victory in a bitter, unpopular war against the Boers and dared France to war during the Fashoda incident in 1898. Historians agree that Salisbury was a strong and effective leader in foreign affairs with a wide grasp of the issues. However, internally, Salisbury was unashamedly reactionary. Though he was a man who embraced science and education, he was an elitist, adamant on keeping the social status quo. He is famous for his saying, whatever happens will be for the worse, and therefore it is in our interest that as little should happen as possible. His party goals were to restrain demagogic liberalism and democratic excess. However, Salisbury couldn't stop the tide of modernism and liberalism. Eventually, all male residents of the United Kingdom were granted the right to vote. Moreover, he would be the last Prime Minister to serve from the House of Lords. Click on the like button if you enjoyed this episode and make sure you subscribe to follow the next ones. You can also visit our Facebook page to check on historical and cultural content shared and posted all around the week. See you next time.